I'm Trish Pahanik, and this is Synopsis, your first early morning briefing. It's Tuesday, August 22nd, 2006, and here is today's top story. ABC's late-night guy, Jimmy Kimmel, will now be seen in the daylight as host of primetime game show Set for Life, produced by Endemol USA. Kimmel will continue his late-night gig with ABC while taping the game show episodes during the daytime hours. Can he host two shows at the same time? Kimmel's response, quote, I tried to tell ABC that it is too difficult to do a talk show every night and an hour-long primetime show, too. Unfortunately, there's a 75-year-old man named Regis who seems to have no problem with it, unquote. No news on when the show will debut. Hey, guess what? If you had a promo or a commercial in this daily podcast, it would go right about here. Coming up under Morgan Stuff, Stargate SG-1 not renewed at Sci-Fi Channel, The Street debuts October 3rd on BBC America, Byron Allen launches Comics Unleashed in 85% of the U.S., and Lifetime launches Video On Demand service on Comcast today. And while I'm telling you about all this stuff, take a look at these beautiful shots provided to us from the Internet Movie Archive. MGM Studios Incorporated will make current episodes of the sci-fi adventure series Stargate SG-1 and Stargate Atlantis available for download and purchase on the iTunes Music Store, starting with the first five episodes of Stargate SG-1's 10th season and the first five episodes of Stargate Atlantis' 3rd season. Future episodes of both series will be available on iTunes within a day of airing on the Sci-Fi Channel. Another note about these two shows, Sci-Fi Channel will not be ordering new episodes of Stargate SG-1 beyond its current 10th season, but the network has ordered additional episodes of Stargate Atlantis. BBC America will premiere a new series set in the north of England called The Street on October 3rd at 10 o'clock. The Street, starring an ensemble cast including Timothy Spall, Jim Broadbent, Jane Horrocks, and Sue Johnston, is about six houses on a particular street and the unexpected stories of the ordinary people living at each address. A new weekly half-hour show combining golf and entertainment, The Clubhouse, will be available on a 3.5-3.5 barter split starting in January, distributed by Mark Anthony Entertainment. Produced in high def, the show will highlight the latest in golf equipment, golf travel opportunities, interviews with PGA players, and tips and techniques from the pros. 17 original episodes will be produced, airing twice over a 34-week period. HGTV HD will premiere What's With That House on September 5th at 10 o'clock, a new show that takes viewers inside unique homes across America. Lifetime Television will launch its video-on-demand service to nearly 10 million Comcast cable subscribers today. Content for Lifetime On Demand will include full-length episodes of new series including Love Spring International and Cheerleader Nation, as well as the network's archive program such as Intimate Portrait, What Should You Do, and Speaking of Women's Health. Other short-form vignettes surrounding the new series will also be featured. In addition, Lifetime On Demand will host special Intimate Portrait episodes and featurettes to highlight Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October. Comedian and actor Byron Allen will host and executive produce the new nationally syndicated comedy series, Comics Unleashed, which premieres on September 25th from Entertainment Studios. Cleared in 85% of the U.S. as well as Canada and abroad, Comics Unleashed is a half hour that invites stand-up comedians to sit together in front of a live audience to talk about everyday topics, with Byron leading the discussions. At the Synopsis website, www.synopsis.com, you'll find a couple of perhaps handy downloads. One is the 2006-2007 fall primetime broadcast schedule with premiere dates. The other is the full and complete list of WB, UPN, and or indie stations who will be switching over to My Network TV or the CW this fall. The latter is courtesy of the folk at My Network TV and the CW. Both are Excel spreadsheets. The William Morris Agency and Ken Linder and Associates will join forces to sign and co-represent radio and TV talent. Uh, Ken Linder Associates specializes in news and hosting broadcast talent, including Matt Lauer and Elizabeth Vargas, whereas the William Morris Agency represents talent in a multitude of arenas. The partnership also returns Ken Linder to William Morris Agency, where he worked up until 1988 when he opened his own agency. Moving along to production development and casting, I have 
four items under that banner this morning. HBO has signed a three-year development deal with actor James Gandolfini, wherein he will help develop original programming for the network, as well as have a first-look deal at new feature projects coming down the pike from HBO's film distribution arm, Picture House. Among the projects currently in development is the feature-length film Hemingway, starring Gandolfini. Fox has given a put pilot commitment to a new project called Bait from Warner Brothers TV and Jerry Bruckheimer. Bait is about a special forces unit available for hire whose specialty is to bait criminals. Sounds a little like a souped up A team with Bruckheimer at the helm. ABC has ordered a script of a project called Class 11 from 20th Century Fox TV and Roundtable Entertainment, and it's based on the book by T.J. Waters called Class 11, inside the CIA's first post-9-11 spy class. The story follows the lives and instruction of five CIA students per Hollywood Reporter. Jeffrey Nachmanoff will write the script. And last of the four, a casting call, Banyan Productions, producers of Trading Spaces, Ambush Makeover, and more, along with the Travel Channel, are casting for a new series called Trip of a Lifetime. People who have strong links to particular destinations, or if you're an adventure seeker, should contact the producers. Check your email for today's edition, which contains email addresses and websites. And moving along to the rating summary for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, all according to Live Plus Same Day ratings from Nielsen Media Research. And it went like this. ABC and Fox shared the top slot on Friday night with a 1.66 adult 18 to 49. At 8 o'clock, NBC nearly won with Dateline at a 1.77, while ABC's America's Funniest Videos was a tenth of a rating and a share point behind at a 1.66. Fox, in web-slinging fashion, lassoed the number one position at 9 o'clock with the final hour of its movie presentation, Spider-Man, at a 1.76. CBS came in second this time with the NFL preseason football game at a 1.65 and rounding things out ABC pulled off a win at 10 o'clock with 2020 at a 1.96. ABC won Saturday night with a 2.38 adult 18 to 49. CBS with its encore of Ghost Whisperer and Fox with its two cops reruns tied for first place at 8 o'clock with a 1.87 each. Then at 9 o'clock, ABC topped the list with Castaway at a 2.38. The ABC movie gained its highest momentum at 10 o'clock with its conclusion delivering a 3.010. And on Sunday night, it was a tight playing field, yet CBS won with a 2.57 adult 18-49, thanks in part to Tiger Woods' 12th Majors win at the PGA Championship, providing a healthy lead-in. Delivering a 2.48, ABC's America's Funniest Videos repeat, just edged out CBS 60 Minutes at a 2.38 to start the evening at 7 o'clock. Then at 8 o'clock, CBS Big Brother took control with a 2.98. NBC grabbed a win at 9 o'clock with the NFL preseason football game at a 2.87. And then ABC polished off another win at 10 o'clock with a Grey's Anatomy redo at a 2.77. And here's today's trivia question in honor of Emmy Week and courtesy of the Emmys by Thomas O'Neill. Only three shows have won the Best Series Emmy Award four years in a row. Can you name any of them? Well, that's it. Be sure to check your email for the full printed version of today's synopsis with some new executive moves, more on ratings, loads of new classified ads, and a few of the stories that didn't make it into this podcast, and of course, tonight's primetime broadcast lineup. The music and synopsis was composed and performed by Michael J. Whalen. For Cynthia Turner, who wrote and compiled synopsis in Connecticut, I'm Trish Pahanek. <laughs>